Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. It's your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we're discussing a watch launched in 2015 that celebrates a decades-old legacy at Chagere Le Coultre, dating back to the 1958 geophysic. That was effectively Chagere Le Coultre's answer to the Patek Philippe A Magnetic and the Rolex Milgauss of its era. It was an engineer and technician's watch. This is a grand luxury timepiece from the Geophysic family. It's the Geophysic Universal Time, featuring deadbeat second and world time. This is a 41 millimeter stainless steel case that's 12 millimeters thick, 48.6 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip, and if you include the solid end links of the bracelet, it is a broad 56 millimeters across the wrist with a 21 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Now, not all of these are equipped with bracelets, so this is a substantial upgrade that mitigates against strap replacement costs down the line. Throwing the watch on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, you can see this model from 2015 looks contemporary even now. It hasn't aged a day, handsomely cut, low slung, and easily fittable underneath a dress cuff. It's both a sports watch and a dress watch at the same time. Plenty of clearance on each side. Don't be dissuaded by the 56 millimeter end link to end link measurement. Just look at my wrist and envision this watch on a wrist as small as 14 centimeters, it would work. Throw it on a strap, it would work even better. One last quick cuff shot so you can see how it would interact with the sleeve. The bracelet is a piece that dates back to the 1990s, but it remains an outstanding one. You have alternately polished and satinated links. You have staggered link alignment as well as size, and you can see inboard we have satin finish on the top of these intermediate links, but they're polished on their sides. Removable links fixed by pins and sleeves. It's a sturdy arrangement, but you will need a block and a punch if you want to size this at home. Plenty of gaps between the links to allow ventilation and cooling on a hot day. And then we have a fascinating clasp. It's actually a double deployant, as you can see, with quadruple triggers. So you have four triggers, and you have to push them all to completely open up the clasp. But then we get a 1.5 millimeter adjustment on each side that's a lot like the Rolex Easy Link system. Easy Link is a five millimeter system, and this system is quoted by various sources as 1.5 to 2.5 millimeters. So you get a sense of how much adjustment is built in there. It'll tuck in and it'll also pull out for expansion. You can do either side independently to fine tune, and you'll appreciate that this watch feels wonderfully comfortable because of the fine sizing options. You can see here the lugs have a angular broken out profile so the case band itself is satin but the lugs are polished they come to a point as they taper and there's a little bit of a transitional bevel on their side the bezel is slightly cantilevered and it sticks out over the satin finished edge of the case the bezel is all of polished as a vertical section and a conical section and then we have a Jager Le Coult branded JL crown underneath the sapphire an extraordinary dial so I'm going to show you how you set this watch because this is not a conventional world time now everything sets in sync. You'll also note I activated hacking or stop seconds. When I start the watch back up, you can see that it has a deadbeat second, or as JLC calls it, a true beat second system. Now there's also an intermediate setting where I can step the hour hand individually. So what I want to do is I want to align the correct time with these reference cities. And you can see there are little cues next to, for example, New York. Uh, that differentiate between cities that use summer and winter time and cities such as, for example, Midway, which is an island in the Pacific that just uses one time frame for the entire year. What you want to do, because you can't move the reference city, is you want to align the reference ring adjacent. So you can see how the reference ring here moves in a clockwise direction that's a little bit different than a conventional world time. That ring generally moves in a counterclockwise direction. So first you wanna align the time with the reference city, then you wanna set the local time. That's the time where you are. So that's how you set this watch. You can see there is a lovely lacquer on top of a sort of mercator projection of the northern hemisphere, and the continents themselves are metallic with a sunburst satin grain across their surfaces. They are raised significantly above the dial base. The dial base, which depicts the seas, or I should say the oceans, they are in a gradient blue that starts gray at the center and becomes almost navy blue black at the edge. You can also see that the lacquer has a little bit of a shine compared to the metallic tinge of the continents, and then there is that lovely gradient. You can also see that there is a 
red and white striped axis that runs straight through the prime meridian and of course the the anti meridian so you have that distinction running straight through britain at the base of the dial applique indices you can see that they have been alternately satinated and polished and it is an applique index dial there is a little bit of a fotina tinge to the loom that's there but it's so spare that it's easy to miss now taking a quick look at the reverse side this is caliber 772 so it's based on the 975 auto tractor architecture, but with quite a few refinements. So it's a unidirectional winder with ceramic rotor bearings for absolute efficiency and durability. And then we have a full balance bridge with a free sprung index for shock tolerance. That comes from the auto tractor. So does the unidirectional winding. So does the spire profile of the gear teeth in the drivetrain. Now, if you look carefully, you could see that there is a secondary mechanism just under my finger, the spring, as well as an escapement that controls the deadbeat system at the center of the dial side, 36 joules, all of this beats away, and I'll do my best to show you the balance structure. All of this beats away at 28,800 vibrations per hour, and the balance, the yoke style balance from the 2007 Extreme Lab one, not the two, but the Extreme Lab one, it's right here. You can see that the yoke actually features opposed back to back JL logos. So if you look at the Shiger Lecoult JL logo on the crown. Imagine two of these horizontally opposed. That's actually what the balance looks like. The balance uses a flat hairspring. It, you can see it does have that non-annular profile. It's a yoke, not a wheel. That's there to limit the effects of thermal variation on the timing, but also to via recessed screw profiles that are used for setting the timing, actually reduce the parasitic effects of air resistance and aerodynamic drag on the balance. Reach out to Team also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details of this 50 meter water resistant steel geophysic universal time. Back with the geophysic universal time.